Using the rectangle and offset tools, with the extrude command, we will create planters and place them next to the stairs. First, let's create a new class for the planters. Click on the Active Class menu in the view bar and choose New Class. Name the class Planters and click OK. Make the new planters class the Active Class by selecting it through the Active Class menu in the view bar. Switch to a top plan view and double click on the rectangle tool in the basic palette. Set the width to 4 and the height to 2.5. Make sure position at next click is checked and click OK. Click once in a blank area above the skate park to place the rectangle. Activate the offset tool in the basic palette. In the toolbar, enable the offset by distance and offset and duplicate modes and set the distance to 0.15. Click once on the inside of the rectangle to create an offset duplicate of the rectangle. With the new rectangle selected, change the distance field to 0.3 in the toolbar and click on the outside of both rectangles. Go to Modify, Send, Send to Back to move the new rectangle behind the other two. Select the inner and outer rectangles, right click on the inner rectangle, and choose Clip Surface. We now have a clipped polyline. The inner rectangle used to clip the outer rectangle will remain selected. We no longer need this rectangle. Press the Delete key to remove the inner rectangle. Now select the remaining inner rectangle, go to Model, Extrude, and set the extrusion to 2. With the extrude selected, in the Object Info palette, set the Bot Z to 1.5. Now select the outer clipped polyline. Go to Model, Extrude, and set the extrusion to 0.15. In the Object Info palette, set the Bot Z to 3.5. Switch to a left isometric view. The planner should look like this. Switch back to a top plan view, select the two extrudes, go to Modify, Create Symbol. Name the symbol Planter Box 1. Set the insertion point to Plan Projection Center and click OK. Click OK again to accept the destination folder. The symbol will be saved in the active file. Move the Planter Box-1 symbol so that the base aligns with the edge of the tapered face of the concrete base and the top of the planter box aligns with the concrete rail. Note, in a top plan view, the planter box is represented by three offset rectangles. The middle rectangle is the edge of the planner's base. The outer rectangle is the edge of the planner's top. When moving the planner box, use these snap points to help align the planner. Now let's place another instance of the planner box-1 symbol on the left side of the stairs on the tapered face. Locate the planner box-1 symbol in the resource browser. Drag and drop a new instance of the symbol. Using the bottom left corner of the planter's base, Move the planter box so that the bottom left corner of the base aligns with the bottom edge of the tapered face and the base of the stairs. Switch to a left isometric view to confirm the placement of the planter box. Next, we will create another planter box that matches the edge of the concrete base on the other side of the stairs. We will use the edge of the stairs and the concrete base to trace the shape of the custom planter using the polygon tool. First, switch to a top plan view, set the Rails class to Invisible by clicking on the Classes button in the view bar, and selecting Invisible for the Rails class. Setting the Rails class to Invisible will make it easier to trace the edge of the concrete base. Activate the Polygon tool in the Basic Palette. With the Vertex mode enabled, trace the shape of the custom planner like this. Now set the Rails class back to Visible. With the polygon selected, activate the reshape tool in the basic palette. Enable the Move Edges Parallel mode in the toolbar. Click on the middle blue control point of the angled edge. Move up and snap to the inner edge of the concrete rail. Click once to move the edge. 
Next, select the middle blue control point of the left edge, move the cursor to the left, tab into the floating data bar, and offset the edge by 0.15. Repeat this action for the top edge as well. Activate the Offset tool in the Basic Palette. In the Toolbar, enable the Offset by Distance and Offset in Duplicate modes, and set the distance to 0.15. Click once on the inside of the polygon to create an offset duplicate of the polygon. Click once again on the inside of the new polygon to make one more offset duplicate. Select the inner and outer polygons, right click on the inner polygon, and choose Clip Surface. We now have a clipped polyline. The inner polygon used to clip the outer polygon will remain selected. We no longer need this object. Press the Delete key to remove the inner polygon. Select the remaining polygon object, go to Model, Extrude, and set the extrusion to 2. In the Object Info Palette, set the Bot Z to 1.5. Now select the clipped polyline, go to Model, Extrude, and set the extrusion to 0.15. Then set the Bot Z to 3.5 in the Object Info Palette. Switch to a left isometric view to check the shape and position of the custom planner. Then switch back to a top plan view. Select both of the extrudes and go to Modify, Create Symbol. Name the symbol. Planner box dash 2, click OK, and then OK again. Now let's create one more planner box. We will use the Deform tool to give this planner tapered sides. Switch to a left isometric view, center the view over the lower level of the skate park, activate the rectangle tool, and enable the corner to corner mode. In the view bar, choose Automatic from the Plane menu. To the right of the curved rail, draw a rectangle on the top surface of the concrete base. Set the delta x to 4.25 and the delta y to negative 2.5. Without clicking, move the cursor over the rectangle. The rectangle will highlight in red, indicating the automatic push pull mode is active. Click once and move your cursor up. Tab into the floating data bar and set the distance to 1. Press Enter or Return twice to extrude the rectangle. Activate the Deform tool in the 3D Modeling toolset. Enable the Taper Solid and Symmetric modes. Move your cursor over the planter. It will highlight in red. Click once to select the extrude. A four-way arrow graphic will appear. Move the arrow to the center of the top surface of the planter. Click once to set the center of the taper. Move the cursor along the red extension line to the edge of the planter. When the Smart Cursor queue Object Slash X is displayed, click once more to set the taper axis. Move the cursor back in towards the center of the planter. Tab into the floating data bar and set the taper ratio to 0.75. Press Enter or Return twice to taper the planter. Next, activate the Rectangle tool and make sure the Corner to Corner mode is enabled. Move the cursor over the top of the planter. When the top of the planter highlights in blue, click once on the top left corner of the planter. Move the cursor to the bottom right corner and click again to place the rectangle. Activate the Offset tool. Enable the Offset by Distance and Offset Original Object modes and set the distance to 0.3. Click once inside the rectangle we just created to offset the rectangle. Now, let's use the Push-Pull tool in the 3D Modeling toolset to subtract a portion of the planter. Make sure the third mode, Subface mode, is enabled. First, click once on the rectangle, next on the planter, now move the cursor over the rectangle. It will highlight in red. Click again to select the face to move. Move your cursor down, tab into the floating data bar, set the distance to negative 0.3, and press Enter or Return twice to move the face.
Now we will add a ledge to the tapered planter box to create a new obstacle. Using the working plane tool, we will set a working plane that is perpendicular to the top of the planter. Then we will cut a hole in the planter and place a ledge in it. In the view bar, click on the render menu and choose wireframe. This will allow us to set a working plane on the interface of the planter. Activate the working plane tool in the 3D modeling tool set. Make sure the second mode, planar face mode, is enabled. Move the cursor over the bottom vertical face of the cutout of the planter. When the face highlights in blue, click once to set the working plane. Press the X key to activate the selection tool. Click on the outer border of the pink working plane indicator to activate the working plane grips. Click the center grip of the working plane. Move it out until it snaps to the edge of the top face of the planter. Click once more to move the working plane. The working plane should now be perpendicular to the edge of the top face of the planter. Activate the rectangle tool and enable the center to corner mode. Move the cursor over the set working plane. Snap to the center of the tapered face. When the Smart Cursor Cue Center appears, click once to start the rectangle. Tab into the floating data bar, set the delta x to negative 0.75 and the delta y to 0.07, and press Enter or Return twice to place the rectangle. Without clicking, move the cursor over the rectangle, the automatic push slash pull mode will activate, and the rectangle will highlight in red. Click once and move the cursor out. Tab into the floating data bar, set the distance to 1, and press Enter or Return twice to extrude the rectangle. Render in OpenGL by going to the Render menu in the view bar and choosing OpenGL. Select both the ledge and the planter and go to Model Subtract Solids. Use the back and front arrows to highlight the planter and check the Retain Subtracting Objects option. This will cut a hole in the planter for the ledge and leave the ledge object in place. If you drag the ledge object out, you will see a hole has been cut into the planter. Go to Edit Undo to undo the move and place the ledge back in place. Let's save this planter as a symbol. Select both the planter and the ledge, go to Modify, Create Symbol, name the symbol Planter Box 3, and click OK twice. Finally, let's use the Mirror tool to mirror and duplicate the planter. Switch to a top plan view, activate the mirror tool, and enable the duplicate mode. Place the cursor over the center of the bottom edge of the ledge. Press the G key to place a datum. Tap into the floating data bar and set the length to 2.5. Move the cursor down until the smart cursor cue angle slash align H appears. Click once and move the cursor to the right. Click once more to mirror and duplicate the planter. Now select both of the planters, go to Modify, Group. These objects will now move together as a group. Symbol resources not only allow you to save objects for later use, they also allow you to quickly edit and make changes to all instances of the symbol. We will edit the planter symbols and adjust the fill color of all the instances by just editing the symbol definition. In the resource browser, locate the planter box 3 symbol. Right click on the symbol and choose Edit 3D Component. The symbol edit window will open, indicated by the colored border around the drawing window, and the 3D symbol geometry will be displayed. With all of the objects selected, set a turquoise fill color in the attributes palette. Click the Exit Symbol button in the top right corner of the drawing window to exit the Symbol Edit window and save the changes. You will see both instances of the Planter Box-3 symbol now show the new fill color. Repeat this process for the Planter Box-1 and Planter Box-2 symbols. Give the geometry of both of these symbols a dark gray fill color. Note. You can also edit the symbol definition by double-clicking on an instance of the symbol in the drawing. Editing a symbol in this way will update the symbol definition in the same way as editing the symbol through the resource browser. 
Any changes will be applied to all instances of the symbol.